how to invest in real estate with no money in South Africa in 2021. Hey, it's Rob Guilty, Coffee with Rob. Let's have some coffee and let's talk about this subject because I've actually heard, mm, so good. I've actually heard a lot of subscribers and a lot of clients ask me, how much money do I need to invest in real estate? And uh, it's a question that needs answered. Do I need money to invest in real estate? Let's talk about it. Let's get to it. Yeah, do I need money to invest in real estate? Now, there's a lot of rules going out there and a lot of stories going out there and a lot of people trying to promote to you that you don't need access to money to invest in real estate. Hmm. Well, that's quite interesting, guys. I've seen one or two that say option leases. Um, here's the thing, guys. Let's say someone tells you to go with an option lease. This is a situation where you tell a client, I'm going to pay for your house in six years' time, and I'm going to lease it until then, and this is how it's going to work. Mm. I don't know many clients that will do that for you. There are, for example, rent-to-buy scenarios where you can rent from a specific loan company. I think Sentinel is one of them. And they'll pay for the house and you can rent it off them and it'll be like a lease scheme where both your names are on the title deed and eventually you can take it over and that sort of thing. But, and here's the big but, you always need access to the finance. You always have to be credit worthy. You always have to be able to pay that loan back. And even if you're renting from a client, you've got to have an income. Because I don't know anyone that's going to rent a property to you, lease a property to you, or sell a property to you without you having some form of income, which you can prove. Which means you've got to have access to the money that you require to purchase the property or rent the property or lease the property, no matter what you do, okay? I don't know anyone that's going to take a chance on you if you don't have a job or you don't have income or whatever the case in South Africa. They won't, all right? They'd be really silly if they do. Nine times out of ten, they will require those factors. So you've got to qualify for that money. And the qualification status is normally a situation where you earn at least three times of what you're going to pay for the property, whether it be buying, leasing, or renting, okay? So when people tell you you can get into property with no job, no money, no nothing, it's in America maybe you can do it, and in Europe, I don't know. Okay, but in South Africa, you are going to struggle. I don't know one client or one person that I know that owns property, that is selling property, that will sell it to you that way. Not anyone. The ones that I know would rent it out themselves. And if they do, they will require a certain status from their client. They will require that you have an income, a job, or something to that effect, and you can prove your income. There is no other way, guys. You're not going to get around this scenario quite so easily as they tell you. You're going to be running around out there looking at properties and then telling the people, oh no, I can't afford it, not going to work. Do you know that before I take clients to show them a property to sell it to them, I generally have them pre-qualified financially. We make sure that the money is available to pay for the property. Okay, There's none of this, oh, there's no money. I mean, this is all... A ruse it's all a scam really guys um, if, if you're gonna buy property you've got to have access to the money and that brings me to the next thing let's say you do have access to say 2 million rand to buy a property and the bank will lend you a hundred percent of that you also need costs that's money you have to pay attorneys money you have to pay for tax transfer duty money you have to pay the bond attorneys Okay, for their services. That's not free. They don't work for free. It doesn't come off the loan amount. You have to pay for that. That's cash you need in your pocket. And on 2 million rand, it's about 100k. Okay, so guys, it's not free. You, you can't walk into property with no money. People tell you, ah, oh, can I start a property with 1,000 rand? Wow. Well done. Because you bam scammed someone big time. Because I really don't know anyone will fall for that trick okay most people that own property if they rent it out they want to ensure the person they're renting it out to or leasing it out to 
can't afford to pay for it. All right, and if it's a case of, oh, I'll buy it from you in seven years, I'm taking an option on the property, that's fine. You can take an option, all right? And you can have a long lease, but the longest lease you can have here is two years. You can't have a three, four, five year lease here. So I don't know what you're talking about. You can in, proper, in, in commercial, but in residential, 24 months, there you go, okay? So your option to buy is in 24 months. Are you going to be able to come up with the money in 24 months? Are you going to have a job? Are you going to be able to loan this money? How are you going to pay for this property? How exactly are you intending to pay for this property? Because let's say you rent, up, rent it from the client. Let's say he allows you and he says, okay, take an option, take this property and rent it from me for 6,000 Rand a month and you can rent it out for 7,000 Rand a month. So over the next 12 months, you make 12,000 Rand. And you've got to pay, let's say the property is half a million rand. How are you going to pay for it? I just asked the question, how are you going to pay for it when the option comes up? Okay. You're probably going to want to try and sell it. And there's another one that comes up. There's a few of these guys going around saying, oh no, put an offer in on a property and sell it while it's on offer. <laughs> doesn't work like that. You're never going to get that right either. That's not going to happen. Um, yeah. They say it can. No, it can't. It all goes through the conveyancer and it all gets done above board. You can't sell the property if it's not yours. You might as well become an estate agent and take a cut off the site. Okay? That way you've got no risk. Much better, eh? <laughs> Guys, if you want to buy a property, make sure you've got access to money finance, whatever the case. That's all you need. You just need access to finance. If you've got access to finance, you're okay. You do need a little bit of cash on the side for the costs because the costs are there. There are costs, right? Um, lawyers don't work for free. The tax man takes his cut with a transfer duty. And if you're a company, that's even VAT applicable, so you can't get away with that either. So bear that in mind, guys. You can't really buy a house with no money and no credit. You know, you... You've got to have access to money to buy a property. So with that, guys, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that helps you in a way because I've had a lot of questions about this and it drives me balmy because I see all these people going out there and, and telling people you can buy houses with no money and, and I know the market. I know what people I'm dealing with and it's a needle in the haystack. You're going to find someone that says, yeah, you can buy my house with no money. <laughs> <laughs> People are not stupid. Sellers are not stupid and buyers are not stupid either. Guys, don't even take them for that because they're going to laugh you off. All right, make sure you've got access to DOSH. So, guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And uh, like the Facebook page and follow me on Instagram as well. Till next time, guys, stay cool. Cheers.